Please welcome Glenn Hutchins, Chairman of North Island and co-founder of Silver Lake. Good evening. Uh, my name is Glenn Hutchins, uh, and I'm mindful that the audience here today is composed uh, of a lot of experts who know a lot more about Bitcoin than I do now and probably ever will, uh, but also um, people who are civilians like me just learning. So I've got as two segments of my talk. I'd like to first talk a little bit about why I have found um, uh, Bitcoin important, what the commercial opportunity is that I see, uh, and I hope later and in coming days the experts here will critique me and help me learn more uh, from what I say. And for the, the people from the general community, um, oh, for, and for the experts, pardon me, I want to talk a little bit at the end about um, what I have an initial hypothesis needs to be done to make Bitcoin uh, reach its full potential as the, uh, as the extraordinary opportunity that I think it is. So let's start first with the overview. So the, the, pre, the um, uh, title of my presentation was um, Why Bitcoin Still Matters. I was reminded earlier today that that's a reference to Mark Andreessen's favorite art, uh, famous article about why Bitcoin matters uh, that woke up a lot of people to the opportunity about Bitcoin. Today there's a, a saying out there which is uh, blockchain good, Bitcoin bad. We heard that a lot and it's been reflected in some of the um, commentary uh, that was going on here today. I happen to think that what I put up here on my, uh, as the title of my presentation is the right way to think about it, which is the blockchain is good but the Bitcoin is better. It's what's really, really important. And let me tell you why I think that. Um, when you talk about new technologies, and I've, I've spent my career uh, as a technology investor, you oftentimes have to talk in analogies or metaphors and enable, enable people to understand what you're talking about. For instance, in many, many people still click on an envelope to send an email. Uh, many of the children uh, probably don't even know what an envelope is or never use an envelope to send kind of mail. But we still use that as a metaphor for mail, even though email is very different than snail mail. So some of these are metaphors which to think about. Secondly. In talking about complex technologies, you sometimes have to take apart the pieces, understand them each, and then assemble them into a whole. So I think of, even though uh, my 26-year-old son tells me that the Bitcoin technology is one thing, I think about thinking about it in its three conceptual segments is a very important way to begin to talk about it. So, uh, and to take each of those uh, apart separately. Uh, and I oftentimes analogize that to an engine. You have to understand the pistons, the carburetor, the battery. None of them are particularly useful until they're assembled into an internal combustion engine, but understanding each and its role is very important. So I see as three major things that operate in the Bitcoin technology. The first is Bitcoin is the currency unit as a store of value. It's, um, in my view, has had way, way too much focus. It's the part that has attracted a lot of general interest. It's, it's the part that has... Um, been where amount of the scandals have been, where the law enforcement interest has been, uh, and as a result of which has been largely misleading to the general public as kind of what Bitcoin is all about. Secondly, is the blockchain is a ledger. It's what we've been talking about a lot today. It's admittedly important, but when it's disconnected from other elements of the Bitcoin technology, it functions, in my view, more like an intranet. In the early days when we were investing in the internet, the first thing that came along was the intranet, where it was actually quite important to connect computers to communicate internally with people with whom you worked. But the transformative value was always only when all those intranets were connected into a global internet, and you had the World Wide Web. Um, and as similarly, I think it's only when all these blockchains are connected globally, uh, and we have a internet of value powered by digital currency technologies, which might or might not be Bitcoin itself, uh, it's been, it, it will be very, very uh, valuable, which is why I think the third piece of the technology, which has been under, misunder, misrepresented in terms of its importance, is what I call the Bitcoin protocol, what I refer to as the Bitcoin protocol, which is not unlike, which is to the, which is to the transfer of value, in my view, as the internet protocol is to the transfer of information. 
And that's where the transformational opportunity, in my view, really resides. Uh, when we can move value around the world at the speed of light with almost no cost, it's when we can fundamentally transform the payment system around the world and provide a huge amount of both commercial, consumer, and human value. Barry Silbert here, maybe there's one other way I could describe it. It's Barry Silbert, who's uh, uh, here somewhere and is a fellow behind uh, the Digital Currency Group uh, and this meeting. Uh, oftentimes uses the analogy of the, um, or metaphor of the railroad to explain this to people, which is the boxcar uh, into which you put the goods, grain, oil, manufactured items, whatever it might be, um, are, are essentially equivalent to the Bitcoin currency unit, which is itself used as the means to move, the, as the thing on top of which you put the value and move the value around. The blockchain is equivalent to the cargo manifest, which tells you kind of what went where when, at what cost. But the Bitcoin protocol are the rails. And the presentation before we talked about the new rails, I thought was a very important and interesting discussion. Because it's what carries its value to the final destination. The rails, payment rails are, are a term we use across the payment landscape where I've invested for many years. And it's only when a global network of rails is constructed that the digital currencies will become transformative. That's when I think we will have what I call value over internet protocol or a new and fundamentally more important type of VOIP. That's how I see the, the, the uh, opportunity. That's when the opportunity becomes transformation. Now, blockchain could end up being a very good enterprise technology. People have built very good software businesses and other technology businesses selling technology to financial services company, to, companies to reduce costs. Um, uh, but the transformational piece of this will be if we can create a brand new form of the payment system, which is much better, much faster, much cheaper, and much more robust than the system we have today, and that's what the Bitcoin protocol can do. So a lot of you in the audience have seen these slides, but if you think this industry is just for hobbyists, uh, you have to think again. The amount of transactions per day that have been running across the Bitcoin network have gotten to uh, asymptotic levels. The hash rates, kind of here in the middle, uh, which is a, um, can be described a couple of different ways, but which are uh, um, basically, one is a measure of the computational capacity running across the network. Also can be understood as a key um, protection against bad actors on the network. Uh, has reached an astounding scale. The pool today of computational power Running, running the Bitcoin technology around the world is 140 times that that runs uh, that's employed by Google in their business. 140 times that, and is equivalent to the technology that resides inside 10,000 the 10,000 largest banks in the world. It's extraordinary scale already, and since people think that Bitcoin is itself largely in its infancy. Uh, that is actually even more astounding if you think what scale this will be at to make it work in the long run. And other thing here which really interests me as an investor is you can see the pace of capital that's gone into Bitcoin right now uh, by the investment community. You can see over here in 1995, which I think is a roughly similar time uh, in the analogy between the value over uh, uh, the internet of value as opposed to the internet protocols we were dealing with. Uh, there had been $250 million invested by venture capitalists and internet-related and internet companies. In uh, 2014, there were $362 million invested. And even though, the, um, as we all know, there are pressures on the technology, early stage technology investment industry right now, having to do with what's happened in the, in the NASDAQ stock market, uh, we still have already, we've already reached in 2016, 15, and uh, uh, we reached in 2015 extraordinary levels uh, of investment in Bitcoin. So this is an industry that looks to me like it's taking off in terms of its, both its underlying transactions, underlying computation power, and the allocation of capital to it. Finally, if you, if you still don't believe me that there's a lot more to um, the Bitcoin technology than, than just the blockchain, look at where that capital is going. What you can see is we investors have invested in a, what I think of as basically a parallel financial services ecosystem where you have companies that are wallets, infrastructure companies, exchanges, financial services companies, mining, as well as the universal companies in the middle. So the capital is also voting 
and the entrepreneurs are also working to build companies that do a lot more than just the ledger, a lot more than just the blockchain. Uh, and uh, so there's a bunch of people out there like me who think that this is a very valuable, and important, uh, and potentially transformative place to go. So that's my sort of message for people in the uh, community who are focusing on blockchain and to the, I think to the uh, to their what will be their um, disadvantage rather than the Bitcoin protocol, the Bitcoin technology. It's also my message to the general public of how to what to look at here and what to focus on. Now what I thought I might do is spend a little bit of time, well, as you can look at this slide, talking to the Bitcoin community themselves because I've become a, um, an investor in Bitcoin, uh, not unlike I did 20 years ago uh, in internet companies. I've invested in uh, the digital currency group and joined the board. Uh, I've also uh, bought a bunch of Bitcoin myself and I have begun a process of building a portfolio of, of the A and B round uh, of, of the Bitcoin companies. And I talk, so I have the opportunity to talk to a number of the CEOs of people building the companies. And I emphasize, I think, three important things. The first thing is that you have to have a consumer application which is simple for your consumers to use. Whether it's an enterprise business or a consumer business, whoever your customer is has to, have, has to be provided with something which is a very simple application. Ideally, they would not even experience Bitcoin technology as they used your application. Today, people do not have to figure out what <clears throat> HTTP is, or TC to go to a website, or TCP IP to send an email, or VOIP to make a phone call. Right? They just use those technologies when they do a web search, send an email, or make a phone call. Uh, and that's what the Bitcoin technology needs to find its way toward, which is the technology guts of consumer applications which are intuitive, easy to use, and provide a lot of consumer benefit. The second is we have to work very, very hard in the Bitcoin community to both to provide consumer applications that reduce latency and reduce costs substantially. The real opportunity here, I did a lot of investing uh, over the years in um, the technology for the trading of, of, of uh, assets, primarily equities, but other assets. And I'm on the board of the NASDAQ stock market and helped to create that, that business. And we have taken the cost of trading to equities down to about 2.5% of what it was when we started about 10 years ago. 2.5%, 1 40th the cost. And the only reason why we can't get that cost down any further right now is the government won't let us charge less than a penny. Decimalization is as far down as we can go. Uh, if you have, so thinking along those lines, if you think of that way, there are massive opportunity, there are massive pools of legacy profitability in the financial services industry, largely around payments, credit card payments, payments processing, remittances, that if you can provide an opportunity for your consumers, which can happen at the speed of light, there are big issues about this in the Bitcoin community, about how if you can get to these transactions that much more quickly, and you can reduce the cost to a fraction of what we have today, you can drive huge amounts of, of value for yourselves and for your consumers, not to mention the fact that you can enable um, commerce to happen that doesn't happen today because it's too expensive to happen. Right, whether that's micropayments, whether that's machine-to-machine um, -machine payments, whether it's the application of Bitcoin technologies to voting or anti-spam or any number of, 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 of opportunities like that. If you think about better, faster, cheaper, fast and cheap and transformative, the, there's some people here I know who've become out of the high-frequency trading community that was entirely enabled. High frequency trading of equities was entirely enabled by the technologies that went at equities that reduced the cost very substantially and reduced the latency very substantially. So think about providing the consumer with a very simple, the customer really, consumer or enterprise, with a very simple technology that doesn't require them to figure out Bitcoin technologies and giving them something that works very, very quickly at very low cost and you will have a massive opportunity in terms of the profit pools that are available to you. The third thing, and perhaps even the most important, is it is really, really important for this industry to embrace 
re regulation. It's very important to get that right for two reasons. One is that um, operating outside of the, well, let me put it this way, banks, deposit-taking institutions, and other parts of the financial services infrastructure, I think will continue to be for a very long time period, important parts of the Bitcoin ecosystem, but will be necessary for the Bitcoin ecosystem to work. So understanding how to work in that context. Also, as you're building out these businesses, this is very different from the internet in this way, being, being able to work uh, inside the framework of the legal and regulatory systems in the countries in which you work is, is going to be uh, critical to, to being successful. And also working with the regulators early on in your company's life to get, make sure the regulations are smart, that they work for your industry, that they are uh, done in a manner that is sensitive to the needs, uh, interests, and manner in which the technology works is very, very important. The industry has to get beyond the Silk Road, Mount Gox kind of part of its life. Um, it needs to work within the know your customer, anti-money laundering, anti-terrorism, OFAC kind of uh, control system. And if you get that right, if we get that right, if we get the consumer uh, benefit right, and if we get the regulatory uh, environment right, this is an op uh, and also embrace Bitcoin technology for what it can do. This is an industry that can be uh, transformative in our lives, both commercially and personally, just the way the internet has over the last 20 years, in my judgment. So that's all I have to say. Uh, I'd be very interested in uh, comments from the folks as we uh, mingle later on about whether you d disagree or, or agree with me and kind of what you think I had right and what you think I had wrong.